So in the last couple of videos, we created a VBA script that would take our chart objects that lived in our Excel workbooks and it would export those charts to a PowerPoint presentation that we had created in the VBA script. Um, and we kind of saw that we could do it with a single chart object or we could even do it with multiple chart objects. Uh, and kind of one of the extensions of that naturally is, well, if I can do it with chart objects, can I do it with other Excel objects? And the answer is, of course, yes. And so in these videos, we're going to now work with Excel list objects. So Excel list objects are basically Excel tables. So ranges that we convert to an Excel table that give us the ability to filter, to change the formatting, and, and a lot of times just create more easier to work with ranges. And so in the first video, we're going to work with just a single Excel table. So the goal will be to export this one Excel table on the table's one sheet. So in order to do this, we're going to go into our VBA editor. And if you haven't already, create a new module. And then after you've created that new module, just like in the last videos, we have to enable an object library. That object library is the PowerPoint object library. So this will give us the ability to create PowerPoint objects and manipulate those PowerPoint objects from within the Excel VBA editor. And in order to do that, we need to go up to the Tools section. So the Tools section of the ribbon. We're going to go down to References. And then on my system, because I've used it in the last videos, I already have mine enabled. But if this is the first time you've worked with this object library, you're not going to see it here at the top. You have to scroll down. So down to M for Microsoft. And then you want to go to the P section. So it's going to be right around here. To enable it, all you have to do is check that box, so right here. So if I check it, it's enabled. Now for some users, you might see a different number than what you're seeing on my screen. So because I'm running the latest version of Excel, I have the latest version of the object library, which is the 16. However, if you're on an earlier version of Excel or PowerPoint, you're going to see a different number. So if you're on Excel 2013, you'll see a Microsoft PowerPoint 15 object library, and if you're on 2010, you'll see a 14. Whatever version you're on, just make sure to pick the Microsoft PowerPoint object library. And after you've done that, we can start writing the subroutine. So I'm going to say sub export table to PowerPoint, put my brackets, enter, tab, and then the first part is I'm going to declare PowerPoint object variables. So these object variables will house different PowerPoint objects for me. The first one is the PowerPoint application. So we're going to create an app called PPT app and it's going to house a PowerPoint.application object. From there, we're going to create another object variable and this one's going to call be, be called PPT Prez and it's going to be a PowerPoint dot presentation object. So because we have an application, I'm sure most of us want a presentation within that application, we need to create an object variable that will hold that presentation for us. And then naturally, since we have a presentation, we're going to want some slides. So I'm going to create another variable called PPT slide. And then this one is going to house a slide object from the PowerPoint library. And then from there, I need to declare just one more variable. And this is going to be an Excel object variable. And the name of that one is going to be called Excel table. And then this is going to be a list object. A list object like stated earlier, it's just an Excel table. Now, for the longest time, I always wondered, why would you call it list object? I mean, isn't it really just a table? Well, if you do some digging in the VBA object model, you will actually come across an object variable called the table object. However, that object relates to the power pivot model. So it's a special type of table that we export from the power pivot model and put it in our worksheet. 
And so in the VBA model, the table object is referencing that. And so right now, the object we're referencing is for an Excel table. So in case you were wondering, because I know it kind of confused me when I first started working with it. After we've declared our variables, we're going to create a new instance of PowerPoint. So we're going to take that PPT app that we declared above, and we're going to set that equal to a new PowerPoint application, a new instance of that application. And now that we have an object that we can play with, we can set the properties of that object. And one of the properties that I'm going to set is for it to be visible, so that way I can see it. So I'm going to make sure I'm setting that to true so I can see my application. And so if I run it now, we'll see that we get an application. It's kind of like an empty shell, so there's no presentation in here and there's no slides, but we have the application. The next thing that we're going to do is now that we've created our application, we're going to create a new presentation within the application. So again, we're going to take that PPT Prez object and we're going to set that equal to the PPT app dot presentations collection and we're going to call the add method on that collection. So we can think of a collection as a group of objects. In this situation, the presentations collection houses a group of presentation objects. And all those presentations live within the PowerPoint application. Now before we ran this line of code, we didn't have any presentations in our collection, but by calling the add method, now we have one presentation in our collection. And now that we have a presentation, we can create a slide. So we're gonna create a new slide within the presentation. So we're going to take the PPT slide and we're going to set that equal to PPT Prez. Again, we're going to work with a collection, but this time it's a slides collection. And again, we're going to call the add method, not the add slide method, the add method. And we have to pass through two parameters. The first parameter specifies the position of this slide. Well, currently we don't have any slides in our presentation, so we're going to pass through one meaning that when we add this slide, it's going to be in position one. The second parameter we have to pass through is the layout of that slide. Well, in the last video, I used blank. So in this one, I'm just going to use the title only so we can kind of see what the different layouts look like. And after I've done that, now I should have a pretty normal looking presentation. And it looks good. So I've got my application got my presentation, and I've got my slide within the presentation. And hey, it's got a title slide only, just like we said on the layout. So now that I've done that, I need to create a reference to the list object I want to export. So I'm gonna set that Excel table object variable that I declared above. I'm gonna call the worksheets collection, and I'm gonna say, hey, within that group of worksheets, I wanna call tables one. So I wanna select that sheet. So tables one. And then each worksheet has another collection in it, and that's gonna be a list objects collection. And then we can specify within that collection which table we want to export. Now this was the first table I created and then this was the second table I created. I want to export this one, so I'm going to pass through a one. And that will now set this variable to reference that Excel table. So if you can't kind of see already, there's definitely a hierarchy here. We have a worksheets collection, and then we have another collection that lives within that worksheet, that's a list objects collection, and that just contains all the Excel tables. And on this line, I'm just saying, hey, take the first one that I created. And now that I have that Excel table, I wanna copy the Excel table. Well, I'll just call it the list object, just to be consistent. So it's gonna be Excel table. I wanna call the range property, and then I wanna call the copy method on that range. 
the range property basically says, well, what range does this table take up in our worksheet? Well, if we look at it, I can see that it takes up B2 through D5. And so the range property basically is gonna return an address almost in a sense, and then we can copy that address to our clipboard. And once we've copied it, we wanna paste it. So we wanna paste the list object in our slide. So we're gonna call the slide. We're gonna to go to the shapes collection. So the shapes collection contains all the shapes on our slide. Well, right now there's only one, it's just the text box. And I'm going to call the paste method and that will paste it as part of that slide. So let's see what we get. <coughs> Perfect. So we have our Excel table and it's now been pasted onto our slide just like we wanted. And if we look back at it, we can see, hey, it even took the first one like we specified. So the script did exactly like we wanted it to do. I will say, when it comes to exporting any kind of object from Excel into PowerPoint, we can write this script and we can see right here that it worked in this instance. There is a very select few times that you might get an error. If that error comes up, it's more than likely related to the clipboard. And why that error happens is basically the, the script's running too fast. So when we call this line, it's copying it to the clipboard, but the problem is this never actually finished. And so when we get to this point of the line where we're saying, hey, paste that to, this, to the slide, well, it's looking towards the clipboard, but it can't find anything. And so there's a way to fix this problem. We just slow down our script. And how we do that is I'm going to, just do an example, but I would just add this line. So I would say, pause the script for one second. And so I call the application object, the wait method, and then it's gonna be now plus, and then it's the numbers bracket, and then it's 12.00, colon 00, and then well, sorry, 01 a.m., then that. And so if I run it now, it just pauses it for a second, but it makes sure it gives the program enough time to make sure that it's truly in the clipboard before we call this paste method. Again, some people run into the issues, other times they don't. I like to tell people just so that way they're aware of it because it's not very clear what's going on and it's one of those errors that you have to do a lot of digging to find the answer. So I did the digging for you, so you can just use my solution. So you know, if, if you run into that, all you've gotta do is you've just gotta slow down the script. Sometimes one second isn't enough. You might have to do two seconds, but you shouldn't have to go more than that. But that concludes this video. In our next video, we're going to expand our exporting from just one list object to multiple list objects. So the first part of that video, we're going to export two list objects from a single worksheet. So like right here. And then in the second part, we're going to export all the list objects in a single workbook. So the ones that are included on the second sheet. But uh, other than that, you know, if you have any questions, you know, please comment below and I'll try to get back to you. And as always, if you could, please like and subscribe. That definitely helps a lot. Uh, but yeah, that concludes this video. See you next time.